I've been hacked a couple of times. I mean, when you when you live stream, I, and so like right, so I run a VPN now. But even now, with the VPN, every time there's some kind of little weird glitch like that, I'm like, ah, oh, shit, here we go again. You know. I feel like. Gosh, you're welcome to hack my 600 credit score and my student loan. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. See what you can get. Yeah. I'm, like, trying to get an apartment down here, and I've been denied, like, three times. So go ahead. Maybe if you thieve my identity, I'll have a better chance. Right, yeah. Maybe if they steal my identity, my credit score will actually go up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? So I was looking through, and I... I think uh, you guys might have a couple of skill increases. Um, so, Carrie, how many terms did you serve in the Navy? Two or three? Three. Three. So, <clears throat> what's your pilot score at right now? I am retrieving it right now. Because I am woefully unprepared. Let's see. My which score? Pilot. Pilot. The pilot is two. Okay. What's your vac suit at? I think that's one. Okay, so vac suit can go up by one, so it'll be two. Sweet. Um, what's your athletic score at? Yeah, I don't even have anything. You don't? No. Am I zero? Ooh. Yeah, you should have athletic zero. Sweet. Um, what's your gunner at? My gunner is plus one. Okay. And I have, I have two ones. I don't know. You have two different gunners? I have two, yeah, both gunners are ones, but neither of them have the detail of... Okay, so hold on. We're going to give you a specialty for that. <clears throat> so for gunner, if I can find gunner. So for the first one, uh, in the parentheses, put in turret. For the second one, hmm. interesting. For the second one, why don't you put in artillery? O R T I L L E R Y. And what that is, is it's tracking a ship's weapons. Um, to planetary targets. So it's basically an or for orbital bombardment. Not that you're really going to do a whole lot of that in a scout ship with two beam lasers, but but it could come in. Right. And let's see, last but not least, what is your mechanic score at? Mechanic is zero. Go ahead and raise mechanic to one. Go ahead and make athletics one as well. Right on. Perfect. And then Cameron. So Cameron, what is your drive score at? <coughs> Um, it looks like I don't have a drive score. Okay, so drive, so drive, you can go ahead and make drive zero. All right. 
And what is your electronic score at? One. Okay. Go ahead and make electronics two. <clears throat> and in the parentheses, uh, go ahead and put sensors. Okay. I think our luck has improved. Yeah, right. Well, it has. We're surviving the next few hours of our adventure. <laughs> um, Cameron, what's diplomat at? Go ahead and make Diplomat zero. Okay. And your med what's your medic score at, just out of curiosity? Three. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, what about Investigate? Zero. Go ahead and make investigate one. Zero. And I don't know if there's, yeah, there's not really any specialties for investigation. And what's your science score at? I have one and then a one with cybernetics. Okay. So the one that doesn't have a specialty Go ahead and make that. I would think that biology would be a good one for a doctor. True. Alright. Okay. Okay. So, um, just a, a heads up, today's game might be a little short um, because you guys are you guys made it a little bit further last session than I expected, and this is the finale, so there's not a whole lot left. And I've got a little bit of extra stuff that I'm going to throw in, but um, it might be a little short. Um, but I'm, I am excited that you guys and Cameron's husband are going to join us for a Wednesday night game. Um, now, Cameron had asked if there was going to be another session zero. Um, yes and no um so yes there will be for any anybody who doesn't have a character um i'll know more about whether or not there'll be a session zero when we get closer but what my idea is that the characters that you guys already have will be just fine they can move forward and go, roll right into that new campaign um and if that is the case if there isn't a session zero then what i would then Cameron, what I would have you do, um, your choice, you can either, um, you guys can create a character and you can you can do a link um, in events between you and your husband, uh, which would grant both of you a skill of your choice at rank zero. Or um, we can pretty quickly generate his character with everybody and he can go through the organic process of picking who he wants to link to um, either way however you want to do that um, but we'll know more about that when we get closer to doing um, that Wednesday night game I kind of want to do the other one-offs with the other two groups and see if there's going to be anybody that would be interested in a two-hour weekly game um, at that point um, sorry that it's on a Wednesday night but <laughs> there's just not enough days in the weekend for me to to run all my campaigns. There's not enough hours in the day. Uh, but I thought uh, two hours on a Wednesday night, you know, I know it's a school night, but I think uh, I think we can we can work in two hours. I think that's pretty that's pretty perfect for me. Yeah, yeah. I was home for my kids before any of this stuff happened, so it's okay. We don't have to <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Bedtimes are out the window. Um <laughs> So yeah, um, so the, the Wednesday night campaign that I am planning to run is Pirates of Drainax. Um, 
it it will mean that uh, whoever is playing in that game, there will be a uh, a new ship that you will that you guys will be given. Um, and I, I given is kind of in quotes. It's more of a loner. Um, <laughs> But it's, it is definitely worth it. Um, and I'm not sure that we'll jump immediately into the campaign. I might do a couple more of these uh, mini adventures to kind of get everybody's feet wet um, and kind of do a lead in kind of prep into the campaign. Uh, since we're going to be doing it every Wednesday night, I'm not constrained by, um, you know, a limited amount of time. So. Uh, we can we can kind of take our time and do it right. So uh, before I get back into where we were at, I would like to thank the friends of Greenwater Guildhall. If you're watching on Twitch, you can scroll down. You'll see some uh, tabs there uh, or tiles. If you don't see the tiles, click on my profile image, and the tiles should come up. Uh, the first on the list is TNC. That is Talon and Claw. Uh, they make beautiful wooden tabletop gaming products such as wooden DM screens, dice vaults, and dice trays. Uh, everything that they make is handmade. They can do custom engraving. Uh, they do absolutely marvelous work. They do take a little bit of time uh, because all of their stuff is handmade, so I'll give them um, a healthy amount of time. I'm still waiting. Um, there was a minor mistake. Uh, the wooden DM screen that I, my wife ordered me for Christmas, um, they sent me the wrong one, and I'm still waiting for that correction to be coming in the mail. And uh, so here it is, March. I'm still waiting for my Christmas card. <laughs> um, but the one that they sent me in the meantime is working as intended. It's just it's not the custom engravement that I wanted that I paid for. Um, next on the list is the Speechless Bard. She makes beautiful leather products, uh, hand-stitched, hand-stamped, and hand-painted, um, all custom-made. Uh, she makes book covers for your core rule books. She has a line of dice bracelets. A very popular one is the Pride bracelet, where each dice on the bracelet is a different color. Um, she has a uh, roll-out dice scroll that when you un unsnap it and roll it out and makes a nice pad for you to roll your dice on she makes absolutely amazing products her husband uh, also is working in the tabletop community he makes some custom made products he just came out with a um, fold out magnetic dice uh, tower so yeah check out speech of spart um, again she's in the UK so if you're gonna order especially if it's a gift give it ample time to get here um, you know how customs can be, I'm sure. And last on the list is Fable Beard Company. They make beard products, uh, beard bombs, oils, uh, butters, co-wash, pretty much everything beard related. Um, and each scent profile is a different fantasy character. Um, I just ordered and received The Hero, which is a warm cologne and rich tobacco scent. And it is quite wonderful. I, I tried it just uh, this morning and it is fantastic. Everything they make is great. Definitely check out Fable Beard Company. Where we left off, um, these young ladies have just entered the <clears throat> reactor complex um, at the base of the city of Calixquell. Calixquell is a underwater city. The reactor complex um, is at the base and most of the city there are vast sections of the city that are either completely flooded or partially flooded and the city is um, it's quite old um, to the tune of a couple thousand years um, it was a bygone it was a product of a bygone er era of the uh, Sindalian Empire and when the Sindalian Empire fell, the emperors uh, tended to take their frustrations out on the um, populace of their empire. And uh, the planet of Chachiwalidaque was one of them. And a nuke was detonated underwater, but it 
the city it was far enough away that the city was able to withstand it um, and is still standing and they evacuated the city uh, 2,000 years later the populace of uh, Chachi Walitaque is um, it, uh, Chachi Walitaque is mostly water uh, probably 98% water it's, it's a lot of water um, the only real land masses would be the polar ice caps and the tips of underwater mountain ranges that just kind of poke up out of the ocean that create very small archipelagos. Um, the largest one of these archipelagos it has the Class B starport on it um, that is directly beneath the high port. The high port is in geosync. Travelers have discovered, uh, either through rumor or actually from flying over and coming in, the populace of Chachi Walitaque is extremely overpopulated. They live in uh, floating cities that are essentially nothing more than cargo containers that are stacked up on top of one another and floating in empty oil drums in the ocean. And people are just crammed on top of each other. And so the planetary government has begun a project to rebuild Kalexqual and they have 200,000 people that are living in the city as they work on it um, but it is far from being ready and then of course disaster struck when um, a number of pseudo squid attacked a submarine um, that uh, rammed into the city causing much damage um, and the only way to get the pumps back online because the the small secondary reactor um, is not sufficient to do the job was to have the travelers go down into the main reactor complex to get the main reactor online which is why they were really set here in the first place um, but now it is more uh, more of an imperative that they do that um, so having made their way down through damaged sections and fighting off juvenile made their way into the reactor complex. Now, um, Beth Smith, Cameron's character, you were injured. Um, however, uh, we were doing that. I, I was doing that wrong. Um, you don't have to roll on the injury table with every injury. That that seemed to... I had to double check that again or triple check it because that seemed... Um, a little hardcore. Uh, so, Cameron, you should have all of your strength and dex back. That should be normal. And so you're just down to nine on your endurance. So um, you're injured, but you're not. I mean, you you are injured definitely. Um, and here, I went over the healing rules. Healing, um, natural healing. Let's assume that. Uh, you just laid down and did nothing for 24 hours. At the end of 24 hours, natural healing would give you one stat point back. Um, when you do, so when we, and the reason, this is why you have your, your strength and dex back, um, for an example. When did med or did first aid on Beth Smith. When you do first aid, you roll and the so let's say that the roll of uh, most rolls are going to be average so you have to hit an eight or higher the effect going over is how many points you get back and so that's why you have a nine for your endurance because you got that many stats back so we did that right but to get more back you would require surgery now the effect applies for surgery to the medic score as well and this is why it is really important that if you have to have surgery, you have you go to somebody who has a decent medical score, like Beth Smith, for example, um, because the uh, the the effect can go the other direction too. So if you fail, and you fail dramatically, let's say that you fail by an effect of four points, you would take four more points of damage. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, the difference between going to Legacy and Providence. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, 
So yeah, you, you really want to make sure that you have a decent medical score, or, or the doctor's got a decent medical score before you get surgery. Now, having said that, like a three is pretty phenomenal. Um, like Cameron is a, a good enough doctor that she would be sought out from an entire planetary populace to perform. She's like Dr. Oz, except she's not a quack. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, all the stuff he talks about. Yeah. You got to take more echinacea. Whatever. <laughs> um, so, like, at a rank four, people would fly from other planets to come see that specialist. So, so three is pretty phenomenal. Okay. I have, I have plus one, which means I'm not in the back of an alley with right. a box cutter. Right. Right, yeah. But yeah, no, plus one, you, uh, plus uh, at, at medic rank one, you could theoretically open your own clinic. Okay, great. So, yeah. Um, I, got my, I got my husband and dad been sitting in on the game to watch, and we, we watch some stuff about Traveler and YouTube, and um, I don't know, well, maybe if there's extra time left over, maybe he gets to character creation or something. We'll, we'll play it by ear, but. Just, well. We could we could write him in right now. Do we want to do that? Do you want to? Yeah, totally. If he if he's up for it, I'm up for it. Okay. Uh, I think I should turn the thing in. Hello. <laughs> Make sure that he has the PDF as well. Naturally. It's the trove, right? It's the what? The trove? Uh, no, let me... Oh, the PDF for a new character sheet. Yeah. yeah. I don't remember where that is. Is that in the, that's in the chat or something? Yeah, let me find it here. Uh, we'll grab it. It is okay, link address. So it is right at this link. And that is the form editable um, PDF. Now I realize those form editing PDFs aren't fantastic. Um, I mean, they're pretty cool. I think they're, unless they fix it, there was like a, um, there was a calculation error for armor, if I remember correctly. Nothing major, but it would like, for some reason, it would calculate the, the kilogram weight incorrectly. And I don't remember why I never was able to figure out why it was doing that but so so it's not really super important um, and the other thing so where it says allies contacts and rivals I know that for the form editable they just put in a very narrow field um, if you open that PDF in Adobe Acrobat reader on your computer um, unfortunately I don't know that you can do it on tablet or phone but on your computer you can open it and if you select fill and sign, you can basically write anything in there that you want. So um, that's how I. Be, that's basically how I did the custom character sheet for your guys' ship. So the first thing that you will want to do, and I'm sorry, what's your name? Devin. Devin. Hi, Devin. I'm Chris. Um, so the first thing that you want to do is we need to roll, or we need to generate the six statistics. Uh, that is right, right? Six? Right. Yes. So what you will do for that is you'll roll 2d6 and add those numbers together and do that six times until you have s generated six numbers. around my room and I'm like, why is it so dark in here? 
I forgot to turn on a light. That's better. <laughs> Six numbers. Okay, so I guess before we place those numbers, the question would be um, what kind of character do you want to play? So you could be the rough and tumble space marine, you could be the, um, the ship's engineer, you could be pretty much anything that you can imagine from science fiction. Like, if you want to play Amos from The Expanse, we can make you that. <laughs> um, I, I was thinking engineer. Okay. So, if you want to be an engineer, I would say um, your two highest numbers should go in intellect and EDU. Okay. They're the same number. They're both right? nine. Where do you want to put your eight? Um, Endurance is kind of like your HP. Yeah, so. I was going to say eight versus endurance, and maybe an eight strength would be nice. Okay. And then seven dexterity, and then I got five for special. Okay. Seven, right? Yeah. <laughs> so. That's how I am, too. So what is your strength? Uh, my strength is eight. Okay, so that's a plus zero for the DM. Is, is nine plus one? It is. Okay. Plus one there, plus one there. We got a social of five, is that, is that just plus zero or is it minus something? It is, a, it is minus one. Okay. All right, so we have your stats. We just discussed, well, no, we'll wait, hold on, because other shit happens here. So then the, so the first thing that happens is you get some background skills. So, I'm sorry, what's your education again? Nine. Nine. Okay. So you get to pick four skills, um, if you, so, Cameron, do you have the um, uh, core rule book from the Trove available? I can't remember what I'm supposed to search for on the Trove. Uh, hold on, I will get you that. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, I think uh, the Trove's ad banners have taken over and are slowing their site down. I got so excited at the thought of D&D in &D space, I bought a book. I have a hardcover now. Oh, did you buy Traveler? I did not buy, like, all of the things. <laughs> did you buy Traveler's core rulebook? I, I did buy the core rulebook. Nice. Very well done. I, just, I, like, I like stuff. I like having stuff. Yes. Well, I, but until now, I had been running, um, when I did run Traveler Games, I'd run it all from PDFs, and I discovered that I have, there's some kind of disconnect with me. I, I can't run a game properly if I don't have a physical book, and I, I don't know exactly why that is. Um, I, I don't know. It, I know that it's mental on my part, but 
something about having the book um, makes there a connection, a physical connection to the game. That is the only thing that I can really describe it as. That and books smell a lot better than my tablet. <laughs> Okay, I'm finally getting here. Hold on, almost there. I would complain and say that this is something to do with my VPN, but all of the other sites open up perfectly fine, so I can't really use that as a uh, as an excuse. So here is core rulebook. I shall copy that link. There we go. And there is I've been uh, reading from Traveler. I picked up the um, two, uh, volume one and volume two of the Traveler's Aid Society. So back in the end of probably I would say the 80s through the early 90s there used to be a magazine called Traveler's Aid Society and it came out quarterly and um, it just had typical magazine format but there were bite sized little chunks and they're like oh well here's what a starport on this planet is like and here's a new ship and here's a new alien race and here's an adventure um, and it was just all completely scattered through random well Mongoose took that idea and they, they created six volumes um, for the new second edition of, Mong of Mongoose Traveler. And so I got volume one and two and I just finished reading volume one. They are excellent. They're they're like $25 and it's like a year's worth of the magazine in one book. And um, I highly recommend them. If you if you can find them or just go to mongoosepublishing.com, you can get them there. They're absolutely fantastic. I love those books. And it's great because you can like, one one article is like, you know, anywhere from two to five pages and you just read it bookmark it and come back to the magazine later it's it's really nice um, little bite-sized lore chunks in there so the next question uh is do you want since there are three of you you can play an alien um if you so choose now um so i limit aliens because humans are so are, are the most populous race in this section of space um i limit aliens to one per every three players and so you're the third player you get to pick if you want to be an alien so the choices for that um, there are of course humans um, then there are um, the aslan which are the aslan are like walking lions and tigers um and they have the special feature of that on their hand they have a dew claw that they that is retractable and they use that quite heavily in combat they are an honor bound race um not unlike the klingons um so their big thing with the males <clears throat> the males do nothing but want to fight um that's all they do and the big thing for them is owning land and the first son of every pride inherits the land of the family so he doesn't have anything to worry about but of course <laughs> they're, uh, they they don't give birth to just one so the the other children have to go out the other sons have to go out and find their own land and in a lot of cases the their, the term for them is Ihati, and they go sometimes forcibly take land on other planets. Um, the women of the Aslan are mostly administrative or technical bound. So if you board an, a, a traditional Aslan ship, almost always their pilot, sensor operator, and engineer are all going to be women because the men are just that's all they do is fight <laughs> and, and fight and bitch amongst one another is kind of their thing so that's the Aslan there are the Vargur which on the other end of the spectrum they are they are from Wolfstock uh, so they are the dog face boys 
Um, they their area is coreward of the Imperium, and they it's called the Varger Extants, and they they're very flighty. Um, what might be a stable government in this section of space now in 30 years probably just break apart and become something else. Um, it, for most people in the Imperium, when they talk about Varger, the first thing that they think about is Corsairs. Because there are a high number of Varger Corsairs to the point where they make piracy into a corporation. So some of them, these, the, some of these, uh, these Corsair bands, Varger Corsair bands, have been around for ages. Um, and they seem to do better than some of their forms of government. So those are the Var that's the Varger and the and the um, um, Aslan. The third option is the um, is the Blap. Um, the Blap are like walking salamanders, um, and they are extremely anal retentive uh, to the point where most Blap make really really good um, administrators and diplomats. Um, they could make good engineers because of like when you if you were to go into a, a, a if you were to go into a workshop where a, a BWAP engineer was all of the tools would be lined up and if you take one and you don't put it back in the right place they will sit there and lecture you about how that's not where that tool is supposed to go it's kind of like working with your dad you know what I mean <laughs> um, so those are the three uh, primary races that you could be there's there is uh, another race that you could be the Dinchia um, they're a minor race um, but yeah those are your options I think I'm thinking human still okay yep yeah. nope that's fine that's perfectly acceptable very helpful so uh, moving on then the next question is are you Oh, sorry. You have so Cameron on in the core rulebook. If you go to page eight, at the bottom of that page, you'll see background skills. So you get a number of background skills at rank zero equal to your education modifier, DM modifier uh, plus three. So you would get four of those. So you can pick four of those background skills at rank zero. Okay. I can tell you, um, out of those four skills, um, I would highly recommend taking Vaxuit. It's a fairly important skill. You don't want to be um, in a uh, spacesuit and at a minus three to you because you're untrained. That's <laughs> yeah, it definitely. Yeah, okay. But for you, if it, I mean, if it were me, I would definitely also put mechanic and electronics on that list. Um, yeah. Um, thinking back soon, mechanic, electronics, and... Let me take a look at profession. Profession's one of those weird skills that I don't... I don't know that it would actually do anything for you, but let me double check. Okay. Um, profession is like one of those skills that um, it's a little weird. Um, it's, you're trained in producing useful goods and services. So a specialty, so specialties like civil engineering, construction, eh, I don't know. I guess profession might be handy in some cases but you might be better off going with something like streetwise because I, I don't think either one of these guys has well no Carrie you've got streetwise don't you you don't streetwise could be streetwise could be very handy <laughs> okay 
Yeah, let's do that. So, I think come out to mechanic streetwise and backs. Okay. I think I would. I was thinking that I would develop streetwise because I'd gone through the academy and done all that, so I would have come out uh, a little bit more wide-eyed and. Yeah. And so forth. And right. Develop streetwise as a pirate. Yeah, and then organically turn into a pirate. Yeah. So then the next question, now that you have your background skills, the next question is if you want to do a pre-career education. So you could go to either the university or the military academy. So then on page 14, you can choose to do a pre-career education of either university or military academy. Okay. I'm thinking uh, military academy. Okay. So <clears throat> you can choose Army, Marines, Navy, your choice. Okay. So what is your intellect? Nine. It is nine. Okay. Go go ahead and roll two D six and add a plus one to that. Okay. <clears throat> so I got seven. So you are you are not able to get into the military academy. However, no. that doesn't prevent you from your first career uh, being in the navy. So we will do that. So, uh, Navy. So, your first career in the Navy. <clears throat> well, actually, you know what? No. You are able to get into the military academy. Um, so I'm going to assume 9 plus. Okay, so you get <clears throat> all of these skills at rank 0. You get pilot. Vac suit will go up to one. You get athletics at zero. Okay. You get gunner at zero. Okay. Uh, mechanic will go up by one. And you get gun combat at zero. Done. Okay. Uh, dun, 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 dun. So then roll TD6 and add your intellect modifier to it. Six. So you do not graduate. And roll 2D6 for an event. You got seven. You get a life event. Uh, roll 2d6 again. Okay. Uh, 
again, seven. You gain a new contact. Um, so, if you want, <clears throat> so let's see here. I believe Carrie and Cameron both have, uh, I believe, rivals and enemies. You could, for your new contact, you could say that you know that person and that would link you to Carrie and Cameron, which means all three of you would get to add any skill you want at rank zero. Nice. Yeah, that sounds great. Okay, so that's how they know you. Um, and um, it, for that rank zero skill, I can tell you um, another skill that is vastly important and seems to be underrated, in my opinion, is recon. Because that is your basic perception skill. Oh, wow. Yeah, we've been, we failed one. So I don't know, maybe all three of you want to take recon at zero. <laughs> This is your second term. Did you want to stay in the Navy? Um, this is on your fellow man. Yeah, I, I, I think I will stay in the Navy for when we're term. Okay. So, uh, roll a d6. Okay. Just one? Yep. One. Your strength goes up by one. And I assume that you're going in, uh, you're in the Navy as an engineer slash gunner, um, which will be good. Roll another D6. One again. Your pilot goes up by one. Uh, what is your education score? It is nine. Okay, go ahead and roll a d6. Six. Uh, you get admin at zero. And then... Roll another D6. All right. Two. Your mechanic goes up by one. Ooh. Ooh, now I have two. <laughs> so, then we have to make a survival check. Okay. Um. Roll 2d6 and add your intellect modifier to it. <clears throat> Nine. Okay, you, you don't have a mishap. And then roll 2d6 for events. Uh, again, nine. You foil an attempted crime on board, such as a mutiny, sabotage, smuggling, or conspiracy. You gain an enemy, but also gain a plus two to your next advancement role in the Navy, which we will do in just a moment. So, under your contacts, you can put down that you have an enemy. Um, not, I don't, there's not really a way to link you in with anybody else. Um, so you just, you are, you haven't, you've gained an enemy. Um, you can give them a name if you want. That's up to you. It's not something that's important right at the moment. Okay. And then roll 2d6 and add your education modifier to it. Okay. Uh, 10. Okay, so 
So that is a 12 total because you have a plus two. Uh, so let's see here. That is an exceptional success. That is. You are raised to the rank of lieutenant um, and you gain leadership one. And melee blade one. All right. Okay. So, uh, you are now 26 years old. Do you want to stay in the Navy or muster out? Um, Lieutenant, um, Let's, let's muster out. Okay. Do you want to take cash or a benefit? Um, what, what would a benefit mean? So a benefit could be that you muster out with a weapon or a Traveler's Aid Society membership. You might, sh you might muster out with a uh, ship or vehicle or a ship share, um, whereas cash is just hard, cold cash. What do you recommend? Get a benefit, like try and, try and get some cash before you become a traveler, but benefits are like still good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'll get a benefit then. Okay, roll a d6. Okay, three. You have the choice, your education can go up by one or you can get two ship shares. Now, ship shares are basically they are stock um, on some ship that is traveling um, out in the dark somewhere probably doing trade or speculation whichever um, basically what those do if you were to hang on to those they will pay you a dividend of 10,000 credits each per year or you can use those and trade them in at a shipyard uh, then they are worth 1 million credits each towards doing upgrades to the ship. Yeah, that sounds great. Let's do the ship shares. Okay, so you have two ship shares. Um, you just put that under your equipment or whatever. That's what I usually do. Hold on. Okay. All right, so you're 26. What career would you like to go into? Now, careers start on... Careers start on page 20, and you can choose any of those. Okay. I think there's a full list. Yeah, there's a full list on page 19. Okay. I think I will become a scholar. Okay. We can do that. Uh, aiming for scientist. Okay. So scientist. So. Roll two d six and add your intellect modifier. So I got eight. Okay, so you are a scholar. That's actually a seven, but that's okay because you're minus one for every previous career. So you are now a scholar at the age of 26. Uh, roll a d6. Two. Your education goes up by one. And roll a d6. Three. Uh, 
if you have diplomat, it goes up by one. If not, it's just rank zero. Okay. Zero. Uh, let's see here. What is your education score now? Uh, my education score is 10. Okay. Roll a d6. Two. You get advocate at rank zero. So if you guys ever need a lawyer, I'm looking at you, Carrie. <laughs> uh, let's see here. And you were going to do scientist? Yes. Okay, roll a d6. Six. Uh, you get science at rank zero. Great. Okay. Roll a survival check. You want to get uh, so roll two d six and add your education modifier to it. At ten, your education modifier is still plus one. Okay. So I get seven. Okay, so you succeed at that. Roll two d six for an event. Five. You win a prestigious prize for your work, garnering both the praise and envy of your peers. Uh, you gain a, gain a plus one to any one benefit roll. So that's good. So you, you might want to put down a note that you get a plus one on your benefits roll. Okay. And roll 2d6 and add your intellect modifier to it. Okay, so you don't advance. The question then is, do you want to remain being a scholar or do you want to muster out? I like being a scholar, I'll stick to that. Okay. You're now 30 years old. Roll a d6. Two. Your education goes up by one. And roll another d6. Uh, one. You get drive at rank zero. Or if you already have it, it goes up by one. Okay. Uh, zero. Uh, roll another d6. Four. You get language at zero. Um, so there are a number of languages at zero. It's not important, but we it, once it gets into a higher rank, then we can pick a specialty. Um, but yeah, you have language at zero. And roll another d6. What? Your admin goes up by one. And roll uh, 2d6, add your education modifier. Nine. So you, you make your survival check. Uh, roll 2d6 for another event. You make a breakthrough in your field. You gain a plus two on your next advancement check. So now it is time for an advancement check. Go ahead and roll 2d6 and add your intellect modifier plus two. Okay. Okay. Yep, you made that. Let's see here. So you can raise your science by one. Uh, so that probably means you have what? Science one or science two? One. You have one. So we will pick a specialty. Uh, if you look at page 68, it will show you all the specialties that are available under science. You can pick one of those. From an engineer. 
engineering standpoint. <laughs> I mean, I, I was thinking maybe robotics. Robotics would be good. Um, planetology might be good. Yeah. Yeah, robotics actually could be very good, especially uh, with uh, Cameron cybernetics. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. So, um, at, at after the age of 34, um, then aging starts to take effect. Um, you Do you want to stay being a scholar to the age of 34, and then we'll worry about aging at that point, or do you want to muster out and become a traveler? I think I'm ready to become a traveler. Okay. So, um, you have a choice. You can pick either cash or benefits. And you get to do this twice. Okay. Wow. Um, I will pick benefits. Okay. So, roll a, let's see here, what was, uh, that was plus one on your next benefits check. Okay. So roll a d6 plus one. Okay, I got four. Your social score goes up by one, which makes that a plus zero. Yay. And then you get another roll. Do you want cash or benefits? I think I'll take cash now. Okay, go ahead and roll a d6. So you get 5,000 credits. Okay. And then... Yeah. If you go to page 48, They already took all of the skills between the two of them for the traveler skill package. Um, I will allow you to take two skills under the starship skills package. You can take two of those. So I would recommend Engineer 1 and maybe maybe Engineer 1 and Electronics 1. Engineer 1. What is astrogation? Astrogation is used for plotting a jump from one star system to the next. I think Carrie's got astrogation pretty well. That came up like immediately when we started the game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I have astrogation at zero. <clears throat> I think I will take engineer and electronics. Okay. So for electronics, um, I would recommend a uh, specialty of comms. Okay. So that would be all modern communications. And for engineer, um, for the specialty, I would recommend J Drive. J Drive, okay. Which is uh, maintaining and operating the ship's jump drive. That's kind of important. Yeah. And of course, anything anything else, so like um, it doesn't negate you from doing other engineering tasks. You can um, also, you know, work on life support and everything else. You you are fairly skilled as an engineer. Great. That sounds good. Okay, so then
in the middle section of your sheet. Let me find it here. So you don't have any under finances, you don't have anything for a pension, you're not in debt. Cash on hand, you should have 5,000 credits. You don't have any monthly ship payments. Um, that right now is all on Cameron, unless you guys want to divvy that up. Um, your cost of living, so your, your social score is six, right? Yes. So your cost of living is 1,200 per month. Now, of course, that um, you don't have to spend twelve hundred a month. That's uh, that's your normal cost of living. So uh, you have five thousand credits to your name. Uh, if you go to page ninety three, that is the equipment section. You probably want to buy some armor. Uh, you can buy up to Ablat armor. Um, any of those on page 94. Ablet's good, but it's really only exceptionally useful against lasers. Um, in my opinion, a flak jacket or even cloth armor is better. Because cloth armor is going to give you a, a, a TL-10 cloth armor is going to give you a plus 8 protection across the board. And it's only 500 credits. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Uh, I think I'll go with that, the cloth armor. Okay. So TL-10 cloth armor, uh, let me find that page. So at the top under armor, you can put cloth uh, in parentheses TL-10. Uh, rad is just a dash. It doesn't give you any protection against radiation. Protection is plus eight. Kilograms is five. And it has no options. Okay. So you probably want a gun of some kind. <laughs> yeah, they're both packing gauss pistols, cause you know when only when only a hand cannon will do. So on page uh, 117, there are some knifey weapons that you could choose. You probably don't need to pick cutlass. There's more than likely there are plenty of cutlasses in the locker, in the ship's locker or next to the airlock. But then slug throwers are on page 118. Uh, and then there's energy weapons. Hard to beat a good old fashioned laser pistol. Yeah. Man. Wow, gas pistol sounds pretty good. Um, let's see. Pistol? Yeah. Okay. 
So you have a TL-11 laser pistol. Uh, let's see here. So that's at the bottom for weapons. Um, laser pistol, TL-11, uh, range 30 meters. Okay. Damage is 3D plus 3. Weighs two kilograms. Magazine is 100. And for traits, here's a nice thing. Pistol, and it is not going to have any effect on you whatsoever as far as pushing you away or discombobulating you. Yeah, that's a trait. Yeah, that's a that's a. <laughs> I've had traveler games where people did not take that into account, and it was hilarious. <laughs> Especially when they don't have the vac suit skill. <laughs> yeah, it was quite quite amusing to watch. So then, how much money do you have left? So, let's see. I forgot how much the... Uh, um, so... Laser pistol and the cloth armor, you spent 3,500. Okay, so I have 1,500 left. So you probably want, let's see here, 1,500. Well, for 1,000, you could get a mechanical toolkit. That would be very helpful, I think. Yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, go ahead and put down that you have a TL5, under equipment, TL5 mechanical toolkit. Okay, so I th think you are ready to go. Uh, give me one second. I'm going to go get something to drink and we will get started. So the way that you guys, um, the way that you join the party, you, um, I think it would be easiest to say is that you're just, you're from uh, Calixqual. Um, you were one of the workers that was, um, well, you're not necessarily from Calixqual, but you ended up here, um, you know, after you mustered out. Um, you took on a job working in the, uh, helping to rebuild the city of Calixqual. And um, you have joined up with these two as they were making their way down to the reactor. And so that is how you have joined up with the rest of the party. Um, and come to find out, you guys have mutual acquaintances. So you kind of know each other, at least through the grapevine. Um, probably not a direct personal relationship, but you know of each other. Um, so that puts you with them. Um, You'll need a name, though. Yeah, you'll have to give yourself a name. You think of a name, and I will be right back. Yeah. Keith Clark. Wow. Yeah, Keith Clark. Very generic. <laughs> Thought you wanted to be. <laughs> Well, I'm just surprised that you came up with something so boring and so quickly. <laughs> 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 like you always had it in mind, like you always wanted to be more cute. Uh, no. Okay. All right, you collect it as. You know, always change your name and face. Yeah.
Hi, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't really say hi. Hello. Welcome to the crew. I'm I'm quietly a, an aspiring pirate, but currently deferring to captain in all things. So I'm I'm the one you gotta keep your eye on. Oh yes, definitely. <laughs> so. <clears throat> I am going to also say that Devin, your character, because you've been, you know, working um, for Calix Qual, <clears throat> let's go ahead and give you another four thousand credits. Okay. Not something that you can spend right away, um, but um, it's there for cash on hand. So, what did you decide your character's name is? Keith Clark. Keith Clark. John Everyman. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you are now listed in the initiative stack. So <clears throat> down to the reactor. Um, now, <clears throat> using with Keith's uh, uh, streetwise ability or his skill, he knows that he's known about the scavengers and the black market that has been operating throughout Calix Qual um, for some time. And in fact, some of the parts that he would use to make repairs to the city were purchased on the black market. Um, so basically what is going on is that <clears throat> the, the city of Calix Qual and on roll 20 you'll see that um, it looks like a big tower um, and it is a thousand meters um, tall and it goes to a depth of 1100 meters under the ocean floor the only thing sticking up above the water are the tips of uh, communications and sensors antennas um, everything else is completely below sea and so <clears throat> they the build the building process or rebuilding process has been slow because they have to bring in parts and whatnot um, via su cargo submarines and the um, but some of these sections so you'll see like this entire midsection is partially flooded which is what they had to travel through to get down um, to the uh, reactor complex at the bottom but a lot of they have these doors sealed off because it's not safe for the the public or, or the citizens that are that have been brought in to work. Um, they haven't cleared them out, and a lot of it is is either partially flooded or at least damaged to the point where they didn't want people going in there. And there's some of the populace, people being people, have snuck into these areas. The engineers that are working to rebuild the complex. So. Yes, it's a black market, but essentially they're just taking parts from one section and selling them to be put into other sections. So it's this weird scavenger recycling program. Sooner or later, new parts are going to have to come in because the stuff that they looted has to be replaced. But, you know, at least they're making some kind of profit in, in the meantime. 1,100 meters down, there's this reactor complex. And so Calixqual, what the, what the world government of Chachi Walitakwe did is they, they purchased two reactors. These are fusion reactors. They purchased them from the habitat zone and the lower work zone. The big reactor, though, the, the main purpose of the second reactor was to be exactly that, as a backup. The main reactor, they hired a company to bring this beast in and install it. They got it in, installed, and right before they were going to turn it on, the company pulled out of their contract. And so the a administrator in the starport, uh, because there's no real you know fusion reactor engineers on site, um, they saw uh, Ching Shi and Beth Smith and said, hey, you guys fly on a spaceship. That means you know about reactors and things. Um, can you come fix our reactor? And they paid them uh, 100,000 credits each to go and, and see if they could get this reactor online. Um, it, it, the administrator's quote was, if the damn thing just needs to be hit with a spanner, then do that and get it running. Um, but at the very least, tell us what's wrong with it if you can't get it running. And so um, when the crisis hit, it suddenly became 
um, rather imperative that these guys make it down to the bottom and turn this thing on, um, whether they know how to do it or not. And so in the process of getting down there, and you'll see it on the, on the floor, on the seabed, there's this busted crane. It fell from a scaffolding up above and is crumpled all across the seafloor here. And the debris from that had covered the main hatch going into the reactor complex. So they had to enter through an emergency hatch and navigate all of this crap on the seafloor. Um, over here, you see the submarine is nose down. It, that was the Nilla. The Nilla was a cargo sub that was attacked by multiple pseudo squids. And pseudo, there's this type of squid that lives in the seas here. Construction has um, kind of uh, disrupted their food chain. And when their food chain gets disrupted, then they, they go into a fight mode. And so these, these large squid attacked this huge cargo sub and enough of them attacked it that they one of them got tangled up in the spindle on the back and it got jammed in position and it couldn't there was no rudder and it ran into the city and so it is down here the, everybody in the four sections of this sub uh, were killed immediately but there was a dozen or so in the rear sections of the sub and there was no way to rescue them because of the pressure at 1100 meters and so the Crews in the wor lower work zone, um, so Ching Shi and Beth Smith convinced them, they had come up with this idea where they had built a makeshift escape pod um, that was pressure capable, and they were going to tow it up to the habitat zone originally and load 50 people onto it. But I mean, that's only 50 people out of 200,000. And so uh, Ching Shi and Beth Smith convinced them instead to tow it down to the Nilla and rescue the sailors in the Nilla um, and while they continued down to the reactor. And um, Beth Smith's, uh, so they went, they went down from the lower work zone uh, to the main reactor via um, what is called a VDO. Um, VDOs are, uh, Hold on, I will pull up video. Where is it? Here it is. So this is the video. Very deep operations diving suit. Um, you'll notice that it doesn't really have feet. It just ends in like little clubs. That is because there are actually turbofans on the bottom and there's turbofans on the lower back and butt of this suit. And it is basically an underwater mech, uh, one man sub kind of thing that allows you to operate underwater. It does require vac suit too though. So they're not really able to operate any squids or a bunch of them rather. Um, they, a lot of the submarines in the work area are armed with, with torpedoes that they call squid bangs. And they, they're explosives that do, they don't really do any real harm to the squid, but it is enough of a discomfort that it gets rid of them. Well, they took several of these together and put all of the munitions into, into two torpedoes. So they had these two super torpedoes that they lit off, one near the Nilla and then one near the main reactor. And they scared away most of these squid, but one decided to stick around and it grabbed onto Beth Smith's VDO and gave it a good squeeze. And so her VDO suit is compromised. Um, but they did make it in, everybody made it into the reactor and <laughs> you get into the reactor, um, who wants to check? I mean, there's like a big, big console and the lights are on. Um, there's a big computer console that controls this whole reactor. Who wants to check the computer screens? Sounds like a job for the ship engineer. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that sounds great. So you check the computer screens. It's giving out a, a readout saying um, uh, nominal readings according to everything that you know um, about fusion reactors and being an engineer yourself. It looks like the reactor core itself is, is fine. And then, of course, there is a big switch, big lever to turn this thing on. So should we try it? 
So you pull the lever and you get a message on the screen and, and there is a warning light and it says fail safe, engineering support required. So they, they <laughs> when, I, <laughs> when I read this, uh, the immediate thing I thought was, so they bought a fusion reactor that doesn't have gauges or anything, instead it has idiot lights. <laughs> it's like, please call, please look in your manual, <laughs> engineering support required. Um, and that's, that is what you find. Um, I will let you go ahead and make a go ahead and make an engineering roll. Now, to do this, you roll two d six. In this case, you would add your education modifier and then add your rank in um, in engineering. Okay. Eleven. Okay. So. You go through all these lines of code. There's multiple screens here, and one is just, you know, black screen with green lines of programming code. You go through the lines of code, and you discover that this is not a software or a control problem. The control system is functioning perfectly, and it is and it is doing its job. So, the actor to go online. And so this, the control portion of the software is working perfectly well. Um, and it's stopping the reactor from, from initializing, which tells you as an engineer that the fault must be physical. Somewhere there is something physically wrong. And I mean, this is a large reactor complex. So <clears throat> how do you guys want to, so, okay. You got some. You got. You got some things that you can prioritize here. So, you can all split up and or and try to find what is wrong with this reactor physically. Second on the list is is damage to Beth Smith's uh, VDO, because once you get the reactor online, that you're not going to be able to get out, or she won't be able to get out because her the her VDO is compromised as far as pressure. So which of these do you want to handle first? Um, I, maybe I can take care of my, my suit and you two should try and work on the reactor. Yeah, I like that idea. That split, seems split our duties. Fair enough. Okay. So Beth Smith uh, Beth, what's your mechanic? Yeah. Because I feel like physically fixing the video is going to be partially engineering, maybe, but also mechanic. You're right. I, I don't have anything mechanic. Okay. Mechanic yeah. two, so I. But you. I, it would make sense for me to help you. Oh, but you got to work other. So that's why I think. I think if. Don't worry, errors on either front can only mean certain death. <laughs> you know, a ton of radiation, or you can die from being crushed in pressure. You know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's true. My uh, combat armor has the radiation protection of 145. Yeah, that's true. You're, you have combat armor, so um, yeah, you mustered out with some pretty good benefits. I got a Geiger counter and some anti-radiation medicine, that's all I got, so... Okay. I, I am not prepared for radiation. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, I remember the first time I looked at a Traveler character sheet, I'm like, why is radiation such a... Well, you know, you fly too... ...gun called a fusion gun man portable. And so it's a, it looks like a flamethrower backpack and this huge gun with a nozzle on it and it fires off the plasma from a fusion reactor in the backpack. And it basically says anybody who fires this thing and they're not wearing the right protective armor takes radiation damage just from pulling the trigger. <laughs> right. um, I, guess, I guess Kiesel helped fix the suit and Beth will help me with the reactor. Okay. 
So um, Beth Smith and Ching Shi make uh, investigation checks, and you can add your um, um, intellect modifier to that. That nine. Okay. I got eight. Okay, so you both made it. Um, and Keith, Clark, make a mechanics check. So I got 10, and then my mechanic is 2. And you can add your education modifier to that. Okay, so then that would be 13. 13, yeah. That is an exceptional success. So, Keith blows it out of the park. He practically re rebuilds the VDO with uh, duct tape and gets this whole thing back up and running. Um, Ching Shi and Beth, you think that you have found the problem. Um, one of the robo divers that was out uh, dealing with the squid. Um, or in a, it was in, pr probably lost in, a, in one of the first attempts to rescue the Nilla. Uh, found a way to enter the reactor complex, but this robo diver has taken some damage, and it is um, basically its AI is moving around, moving this robo diver around in, in a delusional state. Um, it is in a fight or flight mode, and what you see is that in the process of it trying to fend off, uh, you see parts of a immature pea squid laying around all over this thing. So it won the fight, but it is banged up beyond belief. And it got tangled up in a wiring harness. And in order to get out of this wiring harness, it just did what most of us would do in a panic state and yanked itself free. So this wiring harness is all But getting close to the wiring harness is a problem because this robo diver is um, is hostile. Uh, so, how would you guys like to deal with that? Is there like um, computer thing that um, told us that there was an error code? Does that have any way to control? No. Or, no. Okay. No, the divers uh, autonomous. And did, I can show you what these divers look like as well. Somewhere here, here it is. So this is what a robo diver looks like. Um, they are they have a manipulating clamp arm. Uh, also have to Okay. So none of us are like ninjas of stealth or anything. So uh, yeah, I have plus one. But that's not exactly ninja status. Yeah. Mm. Do you want me to try and sneak past it? Well, is there, is there any other idea about what to do? I, well, I, have, I still have my shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> that works for me. I, know, I have no idea. Let's see. On it, that... It looks like it does, it can do 3D six on its attack, and that would basically kill me, yes. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. There's an armor four. I mean, I can try and sneak past it first. Okay. Well, we can sneak past it, attack it. Or it doesn't seem like they're. I can't. Or telepathy it because it's AI. Right, yeah, it's a robot. I mean, you could telekinesis it. That's true. Okay, that's not a bad idea, actually. Okay. So, is there anything around that I could use to, like, trap it uh, with telekinesis? Or would I just have to try and make it freeze? Um. Switch somewhere or something like that that you can trip with your brain. 
there's not really anything around that you could trap it without it doing more damage. Okay. Did they have a, would I know if I had like a kill switch I could flip with my brain? Um, make an... In And then, uh, do I get to add education? Yes. That's a 10. Um, you realize that uh, it is uh, would be possible to disable this thing um, from a remote console, but you don't have the remote console. So basically they come with like a briefcase size computer that would turn this thing on or off. But it doesn't have like a switch on it? No. Well, the, the briefcase, it would be assumed that if, so if this robodiver was sent out to try to do some initial rescue attempt on the Nilla, it, the briefcase would be probably in the lower work zone. <laughs> so are, are you going to go with the telekinesis idea and just trying to lift it up and, and hold it in place? Reconnect all the wires. He does. If I don't, oh, is he back from working on the suit? He's still working on on the video. Oh, oh okay. I don't know. Um, I let me check my. Sheet. Oh wait, that's your sheet. Oh, okay, here's my sheet. <laughs> my electronics is two. Okay. So that's a good sign. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So I'm going to uh, telekinetic it into submission. Okay. So let me take a look here. I think right now I have two points. I was trying to think of something teeny cool, you know? Right. To switch the wire and then, yeah. like Matilda in the book, but not the movie. Yeah. Like, just disconnect the wires to the claw so it can't do any damage. So, telekinesis only costs one point. Oh, okay. Uh, so, go ahead and roll 2d6, add your psionics or your uh, telekinesis uh, rank to it. Okay. So, uh, and you can add your intel, or I'm sorry, your, your psionics modifier to it. Okay. So, um, is. Like externally holding it, my only choice, or can I disconnect something internally using my brain? Um, if you wanted to try to do that, so it would be an average difficulty if you wanted to just grab this thing and lift it up. If you wanted to try to do that, um, it would be difficult. So instead of an, uh, getting an eight, you would need to get a 10 or higher. Yeah. Harder, okay, I thought it would be easier because it was a smaller thing, but if it's, if it's harder, then never mind. Okay. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna try and keep it still. Okay. Let's see, that's eight plus my uh, telekinesis is nine. Okay, so you are able to grab this thing and float it up off the floor, um, and it's it's hovering in the air, and it's it's clamp its claw is going back and forth, open and close. It seems quite anxious over this uh, so Beth are Beth Smith are you going to go in and try to work on this um, wiring harness while it's floating or are you just gonna blast this thing I was gonna try and work on it okay go ahead and make your um, mechanic or electronics check your choice and you can add your EDU to that Nice. So you are able to put this this wiring harness back together and uh, tape off and connect any loose wires. Um, you're able to get this thing back into a working order. While you are doing that, Beth, make a 
recon check. Yep. So you're not at a you're not at a minus anymore, and you can add your intellect to that. Okay. Let me look at that. Nine. So you see, as you're you are successfully putting this wiring harness back together and everything's working okay, you can see flopping around back under all these wires and whatnot. You can see an immature pea squid that has been grievously injured by this robo diver it's missing some of its tentacles and it's all banged up and bleeding all over the place but it's still alive and pissed off and coming for you um what do you right every single one <laughs> all right everybody roll initiative now for Devin, initiative, <clears throat> roll 2d6, and you can add either the modifier for your dexterity or your intellect. It's just as advantageous to be quick of mind as it is to be quick of reflexes. 